Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Today we're going to look at a very interesting organization called Positive Exposure. I guess today is an expert on this particular organization. My guest today is Rick Guidotti. Rick Guidotti is an award-winning photographer who is the founder and CEO of Positive Exposure. Rick, welcome to today's Thanks Global Connections program. Me, Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being with me today. Pleasure. Let's jump right into it. What is Positive Exposure? Well, Positive Exposure is a nonprofit organization that we started 20 years ago, creating opportunities to use the visual arts to celebrate the beauty and richness of human diversity, creating opportunities for people that are living with intellectual, developmental, genetic, or physical differences to be seen as beautiful gorgeous, wonderful people and not as people, as di diseases or diagnoses. It really is about using the arts to celebrate human diversity. Seeing not a disease or a diagnosis, but a person and a beautiful person at that. I started out as a fashion photographer, always told who was beautiful. But as an artist, I never saw beauty just on covers of magazines. I see beauty everywhere. So positive exposure creates opportunities for the world to see beauty, to celebrate beauty, to embrace beauty and the beauty of diversity. How did you decide to launch into this particular project? Ah. Well, as many years ago, I was doing a casting for a, a magazine, and I saw every model in the world that day. I walked out of my studio, which is down the 20th Street and Park Avenue, and mm -hmm. I spotted a young lady waiting for a bus. She was stunning, so beautiful, but yet never included in the beauty standard. She had white, white hair, pale, pale skin. She had a genetic condition called albinism. Albino was the mm -hmm. common term. Mm -hmm. And I knew she had never, I never met a model that looked like this. So that started as the creating opportunities to really see beauty in difference. So working with the albinism support group called NOAA, an advocacy organization, uh, this young first young lady walked in to be photographed and she was beautiful yet had zero self-esteem as a direct result of the bullying and the teasing she received every day in the classroom environment. And she was just standing there like this and just so sad and I think this kid's gorgeous. I've never met anyone that had zero self-esteem. I was like, how am I going to photograph this gorgeous girl? But just the day before I photographed Cindy Crawford for the, on the same set in my studio for a rub lunch, you know, I thought, out of respect for this gorgeous kid, I'm going to photograph her like I would any supermodel. So the fan went on, the music went on, and I literally held the mirror up to her and I said, Christine, look at yourself. You're magnificent. And this kid looked in the mirror. She stands, she looked, and she saw a beautiful reflection for the first time. And she went from this to this and she exploded <laughs> with the smile that literally lit up New York City. She desperately needed to change the way she saw herself. Her community desperately needed to change how they saw her difference. So she created a, the, the, a philosophy that drives positive exposure till today. Mm -hmm. And that philosophy is change how you see see how you change. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? What, what types of projects do you have underway oh, to million, focus yes. on people to look at yeah, well, I work, the beauty within and the beautiful, beauty without? Absolutely. We work a lot with advoca the advocacy organization, family advocacy organizations, hospitals, organizations that serve individuals living with a variety of genetic, physical, behavioral differences. We create these opportunities. We, we, we create imagery. It's very, in, a very safe, in a very safe environment. We create lots of imagery and, and, and lots of photographs that we then share and, and network to re kind of replace all those scary medical type photographs where you see kids mm -hmm. against walls with black bars across <laughs> their eyes. Right. We create these beautiful images of humanity and we work with all these different organizations globally as well. Mm -hmm. We've created several programs. One of them is a Pearls Project where all of our ambassadors that we photograph have an opportunity to blog about life from their unique perspective. And it's, you can find this on our website, on our education. You register. And your website is, is positiveexposure.org. Po positive double E. Exposure positive exposure exposure PositiveExposure.org. Positive yes. Exactly. And but these gorgeous kids, they, get the, they talk about life from their unique perspective. They talk about music and video and movies and, and not just their genetic, but they talk about life. And, it's, and it really kind of breaks down those segregating walls. I go to medical schools around the globe helping healthcare providers in training understand that it's never what you're treating. It's always who you're treating, first and mm -hmm. foremost. So we created a series of films which we're going to show a clip of <laughs> called Frame, which is Faces mm -hmm. Redefining the Art of Medical Education. The really brief films, kind of about eight to 10 minutes targeting medical students to show them the basic hallmark characteristics of a certain diagnosis, but as presented by somebody living with that condition themselves or their families. Again, placing humanity front row and center in medical education. Well, that was a good segue. Let's go to the, let's go to the film. Awesome. We'll be okay. back in just a moment. Yeah, okay. Great, thanks. Hey. My name is Noah, and I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends. We all have a genetic condition called albinism. 
You may have seen us in movies or heard that we're all evil or have magic powers or have red eyes. We're like any other group of people. We're all different, we're all unique, and you will see here the diversity among us. Albinism affects people across the world from all ethnicities, but it's not only in humans. It affects animals too, and all kinds of them as well. There are two main types of albinism, ocular cutaneous and ocular albinism. Ocular cutaneous affects the eyes, the skin, and the hair, and ocular affects just the eyes. Hi. It's my birthday. My name is Alex. And I'm Ezra. And this is Cassie and Penelope. Hello. Hello. And Cassie was born with a genetic syndrome called Marfan syndrome. We wanted to show you a feature Cassie was born with. As you can see, Cassie's chest sinks inward toward the middle. This is called pectus excavatum. But Penelope, what is it that you call, you and Cassie call it? Target. Target. Why do we call it a target, Cass? Because Penelope likes to shoot water in it. Yeah, she used to laugh all the time when I put water in it. Why would you put water in there? Because that's what made her laugh. Can you take a picture of it? Oh yeah, I'm doing it right now. I'm making a movie of it. Chromosomes are the instructions that tell our bodies how to grow and develop. Most people have two copies of each chromosome for a total of 46 chromosomes. Some people have 47 chromosomes. Most people who have Down syndrome have three copies of chromosome 21, also known as trisomy 21. This is caused by a sporadic event known as non-disjunction, which usually occurs prior to conception. Max. Hi, I'm Mitch. I'm 15 years old. It's been a great world for me. It's basically like an extra chromosome, and that chromosome blends in the awesomeness and blends in all of the loyalty, and, you know, I, I could go on and on about, about it, but... Rick, thank you for the video. That was awesome. outstanding. Yeah, you were right on target when you said that. <laughs> now, a few minutes ago, you said that you're involved internationally. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, who are some of the non-governmental organizations? Uh, the uh, I don't know if you're involved with UN agencies or other faith-based mm -hmm. groups or sure. medical groups. or uh, Who are your partners we domestically and overseas? Sure, we collaborate with anyone that, help, that sees the, that needs support to help celebrate diversity. Mm -hmm. So we collaborate with advocacy organizations supporting families and people living with a variety of genetic conditions. We work with genetics institutions around the world like the Mayo Clinic and National Institute of Health and the Karolinska mm -hmm. Institute. Uh, there's, I just came back from India last week where we were working with an organization for kids that are undiagnosed. When you have a diagnosis, you have a, uh, you have a, f a network of families, a network of support, of, of a community of, that you can share in stories. And, but when you're undiagnosed, you're alone. So we're creating a global network. So I was just in India. Prior to that, we were in Sweden. And now going to Perth, I'll be in Western Af uh, Australia in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. really creating a global community of people that are undiagnosed. But we we collaborate with museums and hospitals and medical schools and, and organizations and there are so many different groups that we collaborate with across the board and we generally say yes to everyone because mm -hmm. there's so much work that needs to be done that we really need to kind of create lots of opportunities, lots of uh, opportunities to really create you know, the, the moments that we need, the opportunities, we need to see the beauty in human diversity, to see beyond disease, beyond diagnosis. When you're walking down the street and you see somebody that has a difference, you either stare at that person or you look away, because you know it's not good to stare. But what I've learned for the last 20 years from working with all these great friends of mine, these amazing individuals, that that looking away sometimes is even more painful than staring. So mm -hmm. these photographs are, all create opportunities, these exhibitions, these very public exhibitions from the Smithsonian to to, you know the the, the, um, the Grand Central Station are all over the globe, but very public. So, but it does it gently steadies the glaze, the glance of the public. Don't look away. Come back. Come back. Come back. Gently look. Look, and you will see, and you will be blown away by the beauty once you finally allow yourself to see beauty in difference. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned two relatively diverse countries, Sweden and India. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what types of uh, partners do you have on the ground? You mentioned you were in those two countries. Okay. Uh, who are some of the folks you're working with in each sure. country? Sure. In in um, 
India, well, first of all, in, in Sweden, we worked with the Karolinska Institute, which is a huge genomic institute in, in Stockholm. And we also worked with an organization called the Wilhelm Foundation. And the Wilhelm Foundation started an organization, they started this organization because the, the, the founder had two children and both boys, and they both died of an undiagnosed syndrome. So she took her agony and her pain and created the Wilhelm Foundation, which is to help undiagnosed families. The national international conference is gonna be held in Delhi in mm -hmm. this week on April 6th. So I went last week, they're photographing about 35 families, and their, ex their photographs are gonna be all throughout the, the conference, and so the families are represented. The local families from Delhi are gonna be at this conference, and they'll be uh, celebrated that way. So we start that dialogue. And I'll do the same thing with, with with the Mayo Clinic and also the National Institute of Health mm -hmm. as well. So, do you find your funding comes from mostly foundations? Is that where you're getting your funding? Well, we or get a lot of funding. We do. We write a lot private of contributions. Right. Private you're a five hundred one c three. Right. We're a five hundred one c three, and we one of our biggest goals has always mm -hmm. been to have a space, a public mm -hmm. space that we can invite all of our ambassadors to come, be safe in, and to be inspired, and and to inspire and to teach the public about the beauty of difference, and talk about to have these start these dialogues, these conversations. Well, we just signed this lease on, on Museum Mile in New York City at 109th Street and 5th Avenue. It's amazing. It's going to be a multimedia gallery, a, a perf performance space, lecture hall, screening, for, for screening room, and just uh, uh, just all these great activities will take place in there. So I'm really, and we're just kind of fundraising for that right now. But it really creates an opportunity as a nonprofit organization to celebrate diversity. And there isn't anything like this in New York City at all or anywhere in the world that has this public space where people can come and be celebrated and celebrate and be safe at the same time. Are, are you going to invite the 193 ambassadors at the United Nations to come? Wouldn't that be through your open house I to see what's going on? Why not? Come on, <laughs> why come not? on down. We're, we're gonna, we're, right now we're trying to get the space 100% accessible because a lot of our friends have, have mobility issues or we want to make sure that everybody's invited to this party. But so our funding comes through grants that we cr that we write. Mm -hmm. with, uh, it comes from special projects, transactional programs, Programs where I'm working with hospitals or creating opportunities. Um, uh, we, we get to probably have an annual gala every year. We'll do one again in the fall. Mm -hmm. We create up and, and private donations as a 501c3 puts us in a position to really you know, to really create these opportunities and these all these different programs that will really help all of us. All of us see the beauty and difference. You know, all of our images when we create, they're always face mounted on plexiglass, so or, or glass, so they're very highly um, uh, polished and very highly reflective. So as you walk up and approach this beautiful image and you see this gorgeous face, you also see your own reflection. So you instantly understand that it's never about them; it's about us. It's about all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guests. We'd invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with a PBS or Community Access Television Station, or perhaps an educational institution that has an intra campus television hookup, or you just have a website, you like our shows, you want to put them on your website, you want to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided as a public service at no cost to help people better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're looking at a very unique organization called Positive Exposure, and my guest is an expert on this particular organization. <laughs> Rick Gudotti is the founder and CEO of Positive yes, Exposure. Sir. Rick, you're talking about uh, just a myriad of activities. Uh, this uh, has to be one of the most, uh, you've done a lot of quote, emotional moving things in your life, I'm sure, mm -hmm. given your profession and being involved with the people in the high fashion world with models and that type of thing. What, what has been one of the most memorable events or memorable persons or, pe or maybe a group of people you've met in doing this? that you will always oh, remember. So there may be dozens. Many. There are so many. <laughs> Maybe hundreds. So, so many. I, I, can I, I have a few minutes, I can tell you a couple of stories, but sure, one, really one of the most memorable things, oh, and it always happens, is when I'm photographing this gorgeous kid and, and he or she's bouncing and they're glowing and they're beaming, I always love to look just past his shoulder mm -hmm. to look at his mom or his dad. And they're beaming even brighter because finally somebody sees their gorgeous kid the way that they see them. And that's just mind blowing. It's so exciting, I love that. But so so many opportunities, so many experiences. When I, I had photographed this young, this beautiful young lady by the name of Kaylin. She came in to be photographed. She has a birthmark bilaterally across her face mm -hmm. due to Sturge Weber syndrome. 
beautiful girl. We had so much fun. We took a billion photographs that day. It was great. But at the end of the shoot, her mom calls me. She said, Kaylin never talks to me about school. She never tells me, that, doesn't ever talk about school. She knows if our hair kids are teasing her, I'm going to come in the next day screaming. And that just makes things worse for her. But she said, on her way home from your studio, she said, Mom, kids tell me every single day that I'm ugly. They tell me I'm a freak and that I'm a monster. And I always believe them until today. And then she mobilized, she got positive exposure to me and, and my team to go to her school and present positive exposure to 400 freshman students. And she was on stage with me in her little Madonna headphones running around screaming, what is normal? So she created, this kid, this 14 year old kid created an equation that everything we do, every program we develop has to follow this formula. And that formula is self-acceptance equals self-esteem equals self-advocacy. Amazing, Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, ma amazing, no doubt about it, that's for sure. Well, do you see other countries emulating the type of program that you have? I know you're bringing them in, you're involved with folks from all parts of the sure. world, but do you see them actually setting up something comparable to what you have? Would your operation be a prototype, say, in Absolutely. Ottawa, Canada, or New With Delhi, India, great, or really great Bangkok, question. Thailand, great, or wherever? Great question. We've been to all those countries, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we, we are. We're working with other photographers and other communities to really come. It's going to take an army for us to really come and create a world where all differences are embraced and celebrated. So we're bringing in, when, work, when we're working with communities and, and various, uh, and, and museums and galleries and, and, and scientific uh, uh, institutions, we're, that we're bringing in other people to, to use their talents, whatever they happen to be, to address these issues, issues of stigma and di discrimination and prejudice and a celebration of diversity. So we're every, people, it's, it's a wonderful, a gorgeous idea and everybody embraces this. Every, nobody wants to be seen, first of all, as a disease or diagnosis, always as a person. So mm -hmm. I just, I recently was in the Faroe Islands. They just, out of the blue, contacted us and said, Faroe Islands, so they're, 50, they're, 50, they're just a chain of little islands that are way out in between Iceland and Norway. <laughs> saying, you know, we have only 55,000 people in the, on, on all the Faroe Islands, but, but we never, we know each other, but we don't ever really have a dialogue or conversation about disability, mm -hmm. about diversity. Can you come and help us start that? So we went, we went and photographed 65 individuals living with, with a variety of dis disabilities and, and then but really celebrating them and we created this photographic exhibition that we went back to for International Persons with Disability Day mm -hmm. really creating the dialogue and now there are all these people are getting involved and, and it's moving we did that in Sweden as well and doing it in Australia and New, and in New Zealand and, and, I, and I've traveled several countries and, and Africa working with so many different organizations and NGOs that are in place kind of helping whatever I'm, I'm a photographer this is what I can do mm -hmm. but there are other, so many other photographers out there that we just bring them all together let's all use our talents and but and not only our, but musicians and performers and and actors and and writers and poets and everybody everybody has a talent and when I go to medical schools and I speak to my medical students I make sure they understand that mm -hmm. we know there's a lot of science in medicine but there's a lot of art and passion in medicine so let's use that too and really get this promote this this idea but people mm -hmm. embrace this around the world and culturally even at some some organization some people think well that this uh, this part of the world is not going to want to celebrate their difference or want photography it's kind of taboo and but we find that once people hear what this is about mm -hmm. people run to this and embrace this idea and realize that this is how we're going to move forward we're going to be a, a more tightly unified country uh, uh, world where we we everyone is is embraced everyone is celebrated and and, and it's fair and everyone is honored and this is what we absolutely must do mm -hmm. it's a absolute human rights issue mm -hmm. And I mentioned about the UN ambassadors a few minutes, a minutes ago, but they also at the United Nations, you got the UN Convention on Persons with Disabilities, yes, as absolutely. I recall. They have a major yep. event every year. Yep. This is something to tie right into what you're doing, or you could possibly, I'm, I can't speak for no, them, but sure, sure. you might want to think about contacting them without question, to sure. reach out to a larger number right. of people. You mentioned stigma a minute ago, too, sure. and there's, uh, there's so many stigmas against people, uh, which leads me to myths. What, what are some of the major myths that you've run into oh. in this? Uh, we probably don't have <laughs> two hours to go no, through all of it. What are some of the high? Uh, well, the, 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 some the biggest of the most currently right now dangerous sorry, ones. Most dangerous is in in, um, in East Africa. Mm -hmm. Witch doctors are saying, "Bring me the bones 
of an albino mm -hmm. or a person with albinism, and I'll make a potion that will make you rich. This isn't a million years ago. Kids are getting murdered on their way home from school currently. There are so many organizations from under the same sun and other organizations that are there in place to help protect these kids, but also to raise awareness and to, and to break some of these taboos. It's just a myth, but you know, they're, they're, it's but it's there. But there are some really bad people that are promoting this. And these kids, they just found a, a boy missing arms and legs and and genitals, mm -hmm. and and that he was just he was, and gone. He left us. Mm -hmm. He was attacked for some horrible myth and some horrible superstition. So it really is about using the arts. We created so much. We've been to, to East Africa so many times. We just did a documentary called On Beauty. Actually, about two years ago. It's, it was released and um, it was it follows the young, young woman in East Africa with albinism and then a, another young woman with the same condition as Caitlin with the birthmark mm -hmm. and it tells their story con, you know, in parallel like, universes and about how they come to terms with their difference and what they do with that and how they become advocates and ambassadors for change. But these things are happening and we're really creating these opportunities to really start the dialogue and we have and awareness. We have to raise awareness of these things. Mm -hmm. So we're working really hard and tirelessly with so many organizations. In fact, the woman who's in the featured in the film On Beauty, which is a Kartemkin film, um, she uh, started Positive Exposure Kenya, but she won the Nelson Mandela Young African Leadership Award, so she, she brought the film to the Obama White House, and she also uh, did a, a, a six-week fellowship at, at, at Berkeley, so she's like amazing. <laughs> so, th but it's again raising all this awareness and creating, and, and creating opportunities for all these ambassadors to tell their stories and to be seen and to be heard. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it any way that we can through photography, through the arts, but partnering with so many organizations, dance groups and choreographers and, and musicians and to tell this, help tell these stories and help these stories out there in a way that celebrates diversity. Mm -hmm. So as you move forward, what do you see as the major challenge, maybe there's more than one, mm -hmm. one, two or three major challenges over the next couple of years that you need to overcome in order to even be more successful than you have been in the past? Well, I think what we really want to do is we really want to create opportunities for the public to realize that it's okay to see beauty in difference, mm -hmm. to not to be, and, and, and to see beauty and, and to celebrate and embrace something that you don't understand. When you see somebody with, with the church, it's about not making, checking your, your biases and also not jumping to conclusions and, and judgment, and judging, mm -hmm. but creating opportunities to embrace for people that are different. And we're also different from each other, but to understand that there's beauty in that difference, and that's what we share, we share that we share. Our, we all share humanity, but we also share our differences. And that to really create so many opportunities, public, private, wherever, in the classroom, in the work environment, in the broader public arenas, creating as many opportunities as we can to really help the public along, to help them steady that glance, steady the glance. Don't look away. Come back, and you'll find beauty. It's right here, right in front of you, and you'll see that. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that, and, and this our new positive exposure 109 at 109th Street on Museum Mile will create lots of opportunities for classrooms and people. Everybody comes to New York, everybody, and everybody goes to the Empire State Building. Well, why don't they come to Positive Exposure 109? It's going to be amazing. They'll walk away <laughs> with a better idea of what inclusion looks, what ex equity means. And have a much better understanding of that, mm -hmm. and they'll see beauty in diversity. Exactly. And go to positiveexposure.org yep. and learn much more about it. Well, in the last 30 seconds we have. Mm -hmm. What, what would be your final message to our viewers to help them to get involved? You've had uh, a lot of moving comments and mm -hmm. emotional uh, outreach, I think, to the viewers, but is there a message you would like to leave with them as far as what we need to do there in the future? So, so many messages. It's about, it's about seeing with your heart. It's about seeing beauty in diversity. It's about making sure that we put that judgment back and keep that in check and making sure that we Challenge stigma with everything we have inside of us. All of our talents, use all that to challenge stigma mm -hmm. and celebrate the richness of human diversity. And that's, I think, that the public, once we all start getting, in the, getting involved that way, that's, that's just going to make this world so much better <laughs> because we, we are so rich because of our differences. And it's like, that's, let's put that together and mm -hmm. celebrate that beautiful salad bowl that we are. Mm -hmm. and you're absolutely right, and we do need to do that because there are so many diverse differences amongst folks mm -hmm. within a country, outside of a country, within a community, within a family, and that really is the richness, richness I think, of a society, of a culture, sure. and we have to work towards this. I if not, we're going to see division, we're going to see conflict, we're going to see war, mm -hmm. we're going to see people uh, 
well, really, make, uh, throwing stigmas at one another, that so, type of thing. Absolutely. And we really don't need that because that's not what a society should be about. No. It's, it's dysfunctional, and it, it really does not contribute to the overall quality of life right. and the standard of living for all of us. Mm. It, it, so we need to be really working on this. And you're really doing some remarkable work, right. and I think some very unique work, too. Right. I've not heard a lot about this. In fact, I haven't heard anything right. until today, to okay. be quite honest. Uh, Okay. make a public confession. A, <laughs> so you've okay. uh, really brought us up to Correct, date lovely. on, on uh, positive exposure, yeah. and it's a really interesting organization. Yeah. And I think it's just, now it sounds to me like you're on the launching pad, yes. and it's going to go even higher. Yes. It's going to go even so greater exciting. than what it has been in the future. But Rick, I want to thank you, thank so, you so very much, much for Remember a very interesting thank and you a very so informative much. program. Thank you, Remember, this is a party where everybody's invited. Everybody, <laughs> all 7.6 million yeah, people every, on the planet. It's not going to be a great party. It's everybody's there. <laughs> Everybody Everybody show up. Come. Everybody's <laughs> okay. welcome. Well, thank you thank so you, much. Sir. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.